Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it works. All right, I'm confused. Push the button and the gavel works. <laughs> okay, it is now 7.40. <laughs> we may not get home for baseball start. Where's Donnie? Yes, uh, Donnie. <laughs> Some of us will. Yeah, I saw the 13th. We'll now convene the city council meeting. It's June the 28th, 2011. Welcome one and all. A little thinner than we were before, but uh, so be it. We'll keep going. Please rise for an invocation and a pledge of allegiance. Oh, Heavenly Father, please keep our citizens, our families, our friends, our visitors safe as we go through the summer season and help us prepare for the storm season yet ahead. We thank you for the men and women who serve this city with little recognition but are always there when the need calls. Please continue to watch over them and all of us on this island. Grant us wisdom as we conduct the city's business tonight. For it is in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Marie, will you call the roll? Here. Council Member Tully. Here. Council Member Right here. Council Member Duffy. Here. Council Member Walker. Here. Council Member Peeney. Here. Council Member Stone. Present. Council Member Thomas. Here. Mayor Cronin. Present. Administrator Tucker. Here. And <clears throat> Attorney Halverson. Here. Very good. Thank you very much. Our next order of business is to uh, appoint employee James Katchoff. Did I say it right? I have a motion to accept James as a dispatch. So moved. Second. Motion seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 James, you can meet me down front here. We'll swear you in. We'll put you back to work. Hang on just a second. <laughs> Please raise your hand. I, James Cascott, I, James Cascott, to solemnly swear, to solemnly swear that I am duly qualified, that I am duly qualified, according to the ordinances of the city of Iowa, according to the ordinances of the city of Iowa, to perform the duty, to perform the duty of a physician, of a physician to which I have been selected. To which I can select. But I will, that I will, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, discharge the duties that are Discharge the duties that are So help me God. So help me God. Jim comes to us from Mississippi where he's worked as a dispatch uh, for what, 14 years or something like that? Or Walker. Thank you. Enjoy hearing on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> go back and help keep us safe. Uh, people don't realize what dispatch uh, goes through and how hard they work just trying to understand what the incoming call is trying to tell us and, and what the officers are trying to respond to and how they're reacting. All right, next order of business is reading a journal of previous meetings. You have in your hands uh, two minutes, public hearing on May 24th and the regular meeting of May 24th. May I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. second. Motion and seconded. Any corrections, additions, deletions? None heard. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? None. Okay, motion carries. <coughs> We're now at the point of citizens' comments, although we may have just heard quite a few. But before we get to <laughs> citizens' comments from true citizens, I have some subjects I want to introduce uh, while we still have an audience of any nature. Uh, on the 4th of July, this year as last year, there's going to be a salute from the shore, uh, along the shore line of all South Carolina. Uh, this organization is putting together a flyover. In this case, it'll be four F-16 Vipers from Shore Air, Air Force Base. Um, and they will fly south along the coastline. At last year, it was a relatively low altitude. I have no <coughs> idea what an F-16 can fly at as far as an altitude. Uh, but I know they fly fast. <laughs> the note I had said they're going to cross the North Carolina, South Carolina border heading south at 1 o'clock. They may be here by 1.10. Yep. Well, that's pretty good service. <laughs> right. 
Um, so, if you're on the beach, they're going to be filming. They want red, white, and blue. We want red, white, and blue. They'll uh, provide a video to the troops overseas to show them that the citizens of the island and the entire coastline of Carolina is, uh, is supporting them and thanking them for their service. So if you have the opportunity, you're on the beach, take a flag with you, wear red, white, and blue, do whatever you can to uh, make some noise. They can't hear you, but <laughs> they'll appreciate it and, uh, and do, a, do a good job. We're going to put a banner up uh, on, the, uh, on our signboard uh, to let everybody know. The administrator has approved the sign. <laughs> <laughs> Normally uh, we don't allow banners. <laughs> um, and it, it's a special time for the troops and, and, uh, and further on. It's great idea. So I encourage you there. In addition, since we're talking about troops, um, there's another initiative that's undergoing, under being undertaken here in the Charleston area, and we're going to be on the forefront of it. And when I say we, that means that the city and the, uh, and the residents property owners all uh, uniformly. It's known as Operation R&R, &R, and this is R&R &R is the military term, rest and relaxation, and this will be known as Operation R&R at &R Charleston. This is a program that has been initiated in Hilton Head, has been quite successful over the last couple of years. Uh, they now have an organization formatting, uh, formulating here in the Charleston area, uh, in effect the head of it lives on the island. And I'll read you the program I'll say mission, but basically it's a summary. Operation R&R &R Charleston will give service men and women who have been recently deployed an opportunity to reconnect and strengthen relationships with their families, thereby helping to reduce some of the negative impact of the reintegration. This is when they're returning from their deployment. Families accepted into the program will be awarded a four to seven day stay in a donated home or condominium in the Charleston area between September and May. In addition, local restaurants and attractions will offer deep discounts for food, activities, and there'll be a prepaid grocery card, which will be given to each family. This is a program to, to welcome back and to reconnect the families who have had their loved ones separated for, well, in some cases months, but in many cases years now, as they come back and, and uh, reconnect give them an opportunity to R&R &R here on our island in a, in a free condo or, uh, or home. This is uh, being coordinated by an organization that is coming together. It is coordinating with the property management companies on the island. Sandy is already aware of this as well as others are and are uh, enthusiastic. They're, the people, I met with the people from Hilton Head today and, and elsewhere and they're uh, blown away with the support that we've given them already in just our enthusiasm. In the first part of August, there will be a gathering of volunteers that are needed. Uh, they'll need, it is a program of greeters, people who meet the families when they arrive, provide them their appropriate key to the, the condo or, or property. Uh, all of that has to be organized, <coughs> of course. Uh, any other th maps and any other attraction information, any of these coupons and discounts, will be made available to them at that time. So we, we will be having a call for greeters uh, at the rec center in early August. That date has yet to be determined. But uh, with that, a series of volunteers, as they have done in Hilton Head, uh, will be in the forefront of meeting the uh, families as they come back uh, and, and join us here on the island for anywhere from four days to seven days. Uh, can be couples, can be couples with, with kids, uh, can be couples with extended families, whatever. Uh, can be organized, they have to apply and, and uh, be accepted into the program, uh, whatever. But it, it seems to be you know, well received and something that we're supporting you know, from a city standpoint for whatever that means. Um, but we are uh, enthusiastic about it and, uh, and pushing it forward. I have, they gave me these armband or bracelets, support our troops, Operation R&R. &R. So, uh, I'm going to give it to some of the council members after the council. So if you see them afterwards, now they know what you can ask them what that all means, and, uh, uh, and they'll tell you more about it. So come early August, uh, and maybe even before that, we get uh, we're going to be contacting the press and others to, to make this more public, make people aware of the program, and, and bring it forward. But the property management companies are signing on now, and, and they're trying to line up uh, properties, et cetera, and we'll reach as far as North Carolina to get uh, servicemen that are coming back to Fort Bragg or elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, 
our Air Force Base or anywhere else to uh, to be uh, be candidates to come visit us uh, September through May, so uh, or March or whatever the date is. So I encourage you to uh, to get involved. It sounds like a good program for a worthy cause. Uh, there's just one more note in, in my citizens' comment period. It is we have put together a letter here, just a simple letter, going to Charleston City, uh, Charleston County School District. Just simply says we support rebuilding the Sullivan's Island School. The school is invaluable resource and part of the fabric of our island as well as Sullivan's Island. I have signed it, and I'm going to ask all councilmen and council women who are uh, of a mind to support it to sign on also and we'll send it off to the county school folks uh, they need as much support as they can get we need a school it's been a valuable asset for the island people don't realize how many kids we have resident on this island we probably have by the census i'm a, I'm a statistics guy here. <coughs> we have about 700 i think it's 720 uh, students as of the last census i say students they could be three and four year olds. They don't, don't hold me to it, but they're under the age of 18. 700 on this island, um, which is a large percentage of the island, and certainly the largest percentage of any of the barrier islands in this general area. So, we're a very um, attractive place for people to raise children, and we want to keep it that way. So, moving from that, I will open the floor for any other citizens' comments that would like to address council at this point. And Shoot that are down. on the list. So. Arnold Carrig, 5102 Palm Boulevard, corner of 52nd. Mr. Mayor, members of council, at the May 24th council meeting, reference was made to proceeding with construction of parking nodes on certain island streets. I hope that's not my house. Arnold, Arnold, when the chief gets nervous, we get nervous. Okay. Oh, I didn't know we had the chief. Chief's calm, good. Okay. But uh, <clears throat> mention was made of proceeding with construction of parking nodes in certain island streets. This struck me at the time as something that was premature and probably not a good idea. Deciding that I needed to learn more, I contacted the city for a copy of the city's parking plan and I was informed that one did not exist. In my opinion, forging ahead on a new initiative without a comprehensive parking plan in place is a huge mistake. The city of Isle of Palms needs to develop a comprehensive parking plan with clearly stated objectives and measurable goals before it moves forward with any phase of implementation. Residents need to be able to review the completed plan and comment on it before it is implemented. Not having a plan in place for citizen review also has the effect of fueling the fires of misinformation and further aggravates all parties concerned. I recognize that this council <clears throat> has inherited the current chaotic situation. Parking has always been an issue and the failure of previous administrations to address it to do things like taking control of our roads, for failing to impact the assess of the Charleston, the uh, <clears throat> effect of the growth of the Charleston area's population, and the ease of access that was provided by the connector have all contributed to the current dilemma. While the Planning Commission and Council would like to see a quick solution, it is far more prudent, I think, to delay action until a fully vetted comprehensive plan is developed and in place. Some other thoughts that I'd like to share is that, number one, we can do some things now along Palm Boulevard simply by making use of traffic regulations which are on the books. We need to control the chaotic park anywhere, anyway, and go to things perhaps like parallel parking, enforcing the distance from <coughs> intersections so that you can safely get out of the side streets onto Palm Boulevard. Uh, there's lots of obvious violations every day when I go down Palm Boulevard and I don't see ticket issues. So let's look at what's on, on the books traffic wise and let's enforce it. Parking nodes at the ends of residential streets I don't <coughs> think as I see it now are the way to proceed. It's a business in a residential area 
it raises serious environmental impact issues. Uh, might reconsider it if I saw it in light of a total comprehensive plan, but I would be dead set against it at this point. You need to consider safety factors, some of which I've mentioned along the Palm Boulevard corridor. Uh, in areas where parking would require vehicles to cross bike paths and sidewalks, parking should not be allowed on those areas, and certainly not on top of the bike path, as I've seen many times. Isle of Palms residents have long borne the financial burden, <coughs> excuse me, burden of public safety and public works costs caused by the thousands of day visitors. <clears throat> there needs to be a parking fee substantial enough to help offset this burden and to pay for the cost of administering the parking plan. It should be tiered to encourage parking in areas such as the county and city <coughs> lots where restroom facilities and changing facilities are available. Uh, recently, I made a suggestion regarding parking on a section of Palm Boulevard and was informed that there were strict requirements for parking uh, within 500 feet of the beach and access that the city has to make available if we are to be eligible for beach renourishment funds. Yet a look at the city's recent award-winning beach renourishment project in which public funds were used but no parking or access was provided along the renourished area. Was a dual standard applied, or am I simply misinformed? I don't know. Isle of Palms, Sullivan's Island, and Folly Beach are all choking with the influx of cars of day visitors. It is time for these communities and the county to study how to manage traffic now and in the years to come. It's only going to get worse. While limiting access of vehicles may be an unpopular idea, it's something that needs to be considered. If it, access is not controlled to reasonable numbers, these communities will no longer be a desirable place to live, nor will they be a desirable place to visit, and I don't think anyone wants to see that scenario. I thank you for your attention. You have an unenviable task, but if it is done correctly, I think everyone will benefit. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address council? A twofer. <laughs> Once again, I'm Thomas Johnson, 200 Palm Boulevard. First off, I want to apologize for any potential embarrassment to the city council, male and female members, and or police officers in regards to the comment of honey related to a female member of this audience. I thought that was totally inappropriate in regards to someone's comments. Um, my first comments were in regards to the financial responsibilities of this city council to the citizens of the island in regards to phase one in which the proposed amendment is at a net deficit. Uh, looking at our current federal and state governments and the issues we're encountering uh, to date, I think those issues should be readdressed in regards to the personal statements as a citizen of this community in regards to the second portion of my comments. Again, I just wanted to reiterate, uh, as a citizen that lives at Second Avenue with a lot of parkers, you know, we see the issues. Uh, my in-laws live on 40th Street. We see the issues going down Palm Boulevard. Um, <clears throat> I don't understand if there's been an environmental impact <clears throat> survey in regards to street lights to light these proposed parking lots or the rocks in regards to turtle nesting and the impact that may have with the with the natural environment of the community. But then someone had mentioned earlier in regards to alternatives and we haven't looked at certain alternatives. And it's kind of in a knee-jerk reaction. We have these spaces here. Oh, let's make a green environment down on this area and propose parking lots and others. Um, there are plenty areas of parking parallel on Palm Boulevard with a four-foot water rate. There are plenty of areas on Ocean. Ocean is essentially closed off. And as I mentioned earlier, I, I don't understand why, if it is a state road and is not gated and is designated a private road. Um, in regards to the crowding of parking, 
I see Isle of Palm police officers. I see the animal control. I see the officers on the uh, little four-wheel drive carts. You park 30 feet within the corner, you're going to get a ticket. I think enforcement is a wonderful issue. A lot of day trippers that live here in the community don't understand the parking requirements of the island. They essentially think if their wheels are off the road, it's a parking area. Um, I think if other ideas were considered, someone had mentioned a parking garage earlier, that costs a tremendous <coughs> amount of revenues and probably a tax increase, mill cent or whatever. Uh, if you considered putting parallel parking in, I know someone comes down Palm Boulevard, marks four feet and puts a white stripe down. Uh, if you considered parallel parking with either meters or kiosks, consider a private corporation to run that with a certain percent of revenues going to the city. Again, I'm, I'm transgressing back into phase one of our meeting in regards to the financial commitments. But if we space these parking spots out, you don't have to cram everything in. Take them off the side streets, create a designated parking area. Uh, I think there's a lot of additional alternatives that, that could be looked at and could be considered. I think with the environmental impact of the cars that are already on the island, I noticed uh, we've been here our whole life. I noticed once the bridge came in how this environment and this community has changed. Uh, you know, the public lots, we have private lots, we have public lots. They're not completely full. I do know the, the city lot where the pier is, there's certain reserve spaces that aren't quite yet open, to my knowledge. Now, I could be wrong on this. I'm not on city council. I'm not privy to all the information. But I think there's a lot of alternatives that could be, that could be addressed with, with public voice and opinion. The gentleman on Carolina Boulevard. Uh, Carolina is an issue. It's a small street. It's, it's one of the most narrow streets on the island. And I'm on it frequently. Cars travel fast on Carolina. Cars travel fast on this end of Palm. They double cross that yellow line and pass all the time. Uh, the Isle of Palms Police Department almost regularly has someone at Breach Inlet or at the Exchange Club monitoring traffic. Uh, we open up more parking down there at Breach Inlet. You have to consider the boathouse and their parking. They have a valet parking. They park all the way down almost to Clay Cable's house on a busy Friday or Saturday. This weekend, they'll be down there. I think there's just other things to consider, and I appreciate your opportunity for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? None hurt. All right. Moving on. <coughs> um, in the interest of, uh, well, let's go through the committee reports and do it quickly. Uh, as quickly as anybody wants. <coughs> I'll do the Ways and Means. Uh, we have two committee reports in your possession. One is the committee report, the special meeting on 545 on uh, June 6th. It covers much of the material we've gone through the last hour, dealing with the parking uh, nodes and subsequent <coughs> costs for uh, administering the permit application. So uh, if there's any questions on that, uh, please bring it forward. I will review the minutes of Tuesday, June 21st. We did have a citizen's comment. Will uh, Millman did speak to us. He's a resident on Ocean Boulevard. He's concerned. Um, he was not well informed as far as what the plans were. Uh, I would say he's now informed, but still concerned. Uh, uh, so we moved off of that. Uh, we got a re had a report from our treasurer, and uh, I'll report that 84% of the year's budget uh, has been realized on revenue, which is 99% of where we were at the same time last year. expenses and the revenue is on projection to meet our uh, expectations so we'll have a, uh, a, uh, a good performance by the end of the year once the formal books are closed after all of June's revenue and costs are recognized. 
and our general fund balance is at 30 percent which is our target and we're already there for this year so i expect it will actually be improved uh, by the end of june our tourism income uh, month of may exceeded uh, prior months of may uh, we, we realized the municipal accommodations tax sixty three thousand dollars which means for the fiscal year uh, of 11 we are 19 percent higher than where we were in, in fiscal year uh, 2010 in our hospitality tax which of course is uh, includes beverage uh, may is also a good year a good month and we are still nine percent major projects which we'll review here shortly with each uh, committee report and we discussed the resolution related to Gatsby 54. In addition we uh, we recommended and I'll make a motion to approve a change order on our uh, 57th to 53rd drainage project uh, change orders 4, 5, and 6 the sum of which will not exceed $9,000 for the relocation of utility lines to uh, uh, on the execution of the project on those avenues. So I'll make that in the form of a motion. Second. Motion and seconded. Uh, any discussion? I can tell you having driven down there today, they are digging on 53rd, which is uh, a good sign. <laughs> um, and hopefully they'll be able to execute this utility relocation and be able to, uh, to move forward and complete the project in the next few weeks. So any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? None heard. Thank you. Also, in your in our discussion and in your package, you have a resolution. Uh, this is a resolution which deals with Gatsby 54. Gatsby 54 is a Government Accounting Standard Board. This is the 54th uh, modification to, to their standards. Uh, I don't sure they'll ever stop. Uh, and this just brings us in conformance, uh, this resolution that you have before you. Uh, we need to read it. Yes, sir. I can read fast. Uh, <laughs> you heard a groan, but okay. <laughs> I'll ask the city administrator to read it. Uh, do you have a copy? I do. Okay. Okay, I will read rapidly. Whereas the Governmental Accounting Standing Board, Gasby, has adopted Statement 54, Gasby 54, a new standard for governmental fund balance reporting and governmental fund type definitions that became effective in governmental fiscal years starting as of June 15, 2010. And whereas the city currently accounts for governmental fund balances, all funds other than the Marina Enterprise Fund and the Fire Department 1% Agency Fund, as either reserved or unreserved, which has two subcategories of designated and undesignated. And whereas the new governmental fund categories of fund balances prescribed by GASB 54 are non-spendable, restricted, committed, assigned, and unassigned. And whereas City Council elected to implement GASB 54 requirements and to apply such requirements to its financial statements beginning with fiscal year June 1st, June 1, 2010 through June 30th, 2011. Now, therefore, be it resolved that City Council hereby adopts a funding policy, fund balance policy. Fund balance measures the net financial resources available to finance expenditures of future periods. The city's unassigned fund balance in the general fund will be maintained to provide the city with sufficient working capital and a margin of safety to address the cyclical fluctuations in revenues and expenditures. Fund balance of the city may be committed for a specific pur purpose by resolution of the city council. Amendments or modifications of the committed funds mu must also be approved by resolution of the city council. When it is appropriate for fund balance to be assigned, the city council delegates authority to the mayor and city administrator. City council may also assign fund balances by a simple majority vote and has the authority to remove or change assigned fund balance with a simple majority vote. Now, therefore, be it resolved that city council, utilizing the Gatsby 54 definition of committed fund balance, commits as an initial amount the following portions of its governmental fund balances as follows. $1,827,679 is committed from the general fund for disaster recovery. Spending may occur as needed for the purpose intended. $273,900 is committed from the capital projects fund for recreation ball field renovations. Spending may occur as needed for the purpose intended. And be it resolved that the city's financial goal is to have a sufficient balance in the general fund operating fund with sufficient working capital and a margin of safety to address cyclical fluctuations in revenues and expenditures. 
the city shall strive to maintain a yearly fund balance as of June 30th in the general fund operating fund in which the total fund balance is 30% of the general fund expenditures and the unassigned fund balance is 20% of the total general fund expenditures. Passed and approved by City Council for the City of Isle of Palms, South Carolina on the 28th day of June 2011. Richard F. Cronin, Mayor. Thank you. I have a motion to approve the resolution? So moved. Motion. Second. Seconded. Uh, well, this is a requirement. Uh, it really doesn't change how we operate the fund balances that uh, Linda has read for us where the uh, 6-30-2010 fund balances and the auditors will work from that point uh, forward in auditing us uh, as we go through this year's uh, financial review from an audit standpoint. So, uh, Any other comments on GASB 54? And the resolution. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unheard. Auditors will be happy <laughs> once again. Okay, uh, and I can, hmm? okay, yeah, we had no other <laughs> subject matters to discuss, so I'll move off of Ways and Means, move to Public Safety. Thank you, Mayor. Public Safety Committee met Tuesday, June 7th. Under old business, we considered revisions of Ordinance 2011-4. Uh, Attorney Halverson was seeking feedback before the draft ordinance returns to City Council for consideration. Um, in consultation with Chief Buchanan, informed us that some of these changes in the proposed draft ordinance would be a little labor-intensive. Um, we suggested that Attorney Halverson and the building department director Carr should review the current process and determine if there's a better way to communicate some of this information. And I'll, I'll regress, this has to do with alarms coming in to fire and police. Um, I'm getting some, not getting the correct response that we'd like from the homeowners slash property managers. We determined that staff should meet and discuss further options and to come up with another draft of this ordinance. And we have an update on the Al Palms connector road project. Um, permitting process can be another six months. Uh, the earliest construction could be could begin probably June of 2013. That's the other side of the connector over there. Talk about consideration of some title changes in the fire department. The chief will be uh, getting with us in the upcoming meeting to discuss those. It will not affect the budget in any way. Discuss the ISO visit results. And as you know, this is the <clears throat> rating that the ISO gives our fire department. I'm very happy to report that the City of Isle Palms is moving from a rating of four to a rating of three, which is a better rating. I believe this takes place in September, Chief. Not if I'm right. Okay, thank you. Uh, this could have an effect on your fire insurance. And thanks to all of the personnel involved in the city and the water and sewer department because the number of hydrants, placement of hydrants and all had something to do with this. So if they dug across your yard in the last year or so, it was for good reason. We've got a lot more fire hydrants. Um, on a different topic, Councilmember Loftus quoted an anti-littering anti -littering slogan, if you get a fine, you will get a fine if you leave it behind, which we thought was was very good and, and uh, hope everyone is listening to that. I'll go on to the departmental reports. The fire department put a brush fire across from County Park, had some smoke from wood on a grill they responded to. We responded to a church person with chest pains on Goat Island and, and we're, we get there a little bit quicker than the other folks and, and we transferred that person to DNR. The fire department responded to 69 calls last month, 26 were residents, 43 were non-residents, and 43 EMS calls. 
the chief reported that the EMS presence on the island on the weekends is helping to improve their response time. As you know, we expended some money to give them a power plug-in at the fire station. 323 fire hydrants were inspected and 20 required maintenance, which was completed. Moving on to the police department. Ah. <laughs> I know. They were very busy in May. I won't say much more than that. We had a stol uh, vehicle stolen from the island, which resulted in a crash uh, and wreck because there, it was involved in a chase, which I believe was off island in Charleston County. It wasn't our guys chasing. <laughs> Total 57 victim of crime notifications were made. Um, special patrol requests in, in May, and this is a call the police department if you're going to be out of town, they'll check your house. In May, the department did 1,255 checks. There were a total of 4,565 calls this month, which is a 7% increase from last year. The department did 1,400 building checks and 320 traffic stops. So our folks are hitting the busy time of the year. Our next meeting, Wednesday, July 13th. Thank you, Mayor. Any okay. Questions? questions? I do have a question, Mr. Chairman. Um, it seems that when there's an issue on Goat Island, our public safety people respond, um, but they do not pay any fees. Uh, do we bill them for these services when we launch a boat or a safety issue to help them out? Or are they free riding on the goodwill of we, their next door neighbor? We do not. That is part of the um, agreement we have with Charleston County to reciprocate for services that are provided. And, and they do also understand that um, that that they're second. In other words, if, if our personnel are tied up on a call on the Isle of Palms, then the Isle of Palms call takes priority, and and either Charleston right. County's got to get to right. Goat Island or um, or um, DNR or someone like that. So primary is Isle of Palms. They are secondary, and they have been made aware of that. It's a, a risk that they're taking. Okay. Um. I think Ralph's point is, you know, are they abusing that, <laughs> our closeness and uh, we get nothing for it. But if life is in jeopardy, uh, our personnel is falling. We do have one uh, administrative correction. We have a motion on the floor with a second. Didn't we move? Uh, uh, there was a motion and a second, I do believe. This has because to go back to the, cha the change order on, on change, change order, order four, five, and we six. Voted on it. I thought we voted, but the we, did. We, did. we did. We did. We voted on. Well, I told them, yes. Motion. You made the motion. Council second. I apologize. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Welcome back, Marie. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's been a long night. <laughs> All right. Public works. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Public works met at 4 p.m. on uh, June 8th, and I think all of our residents know that. Director Pitts and his team are, are doing their jobs. We're on our, our twice a week pickups, as well as uh, the standard increase in uh, picking up of yard debris from the great spring growth that we've had here. No rain and all that other good stuff. Um, uh, we discussed the, uh, the budget for uh, his maintenance, and Director Pitts is well ahead of schedule with vehicle maintenance, keeping all of his um, machinery and top working order. Uh, we did discuss one point of information for residents that uh, the department does not collect paint cans with paint inside of them, as these will not be <coughs> accepted at the landfill, and we don't want to have our folks have, have the truck come back here full, full just to take those out. So just if you are watching this on TV, please make sure if you're putting out paint cans, cans to be collected, please make sure that they are empty paint cans. And please do not try to hide them in the bottom of your garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as you heard, uh, we're moving forward on the, uh, the drainage project for 53rd to 55th Avenue. In addition, Edie's is, uh, has finished uh, their first year work of the ditch maintenance program with uh, the cleaning up of the, uh, the 20th, 20th Avenue uh, ditch. 
of, of other notes that we did discuss, uh, beach monitoring results for <coughs> May of 2011 were satisfactory. So water quality is good. Our next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, July 6th, where we hope to have a, <coughs> a final date for finishing of the uh, drainage project for 53rd to 57th. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Very good. Thank you very much. Comments, Mr. Mayor? Please. Uh, as far as the paint cans, uh, please note um, that to our hazardous pickup, when we do the hazardous collection every year, paint can be d dropped off there and it can be recycled properly. Um, because if someone would take that they have a partial can of paint that they don't want anymore, we don't want them dumping it into Drains or the drain mm -hmm. or some other. Way. So uh, we do have a means for people who do have excess paint to uh, take care of it in a proper manner. On the island, once a year. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Recreation Committee. Recreation Committee met on June 7th uh, with Councilman Duffy and myself in attendance. Um, it's a mixed season for the rec. It's always a busy season, but the um, um, several classes of the stop have been suspended for the summer months and return when uh, classes begin, but the exercise classes are still going strong. Yoga, hip hop, um, semi-personal training has increased. Zumba is doing well. Uh, we had our last teenagers meeting again in May and meetings will resume in the fall. Um, most adult athletic teams also ended in May, but Friday night hoops still continue. The half rubber tournament is scheduled in August. The beach run is scheduled July 23rd. We have theater camp beginning in August with Jimmy Ward leading that. Um, and one thing, I was out uh, early for a turtle call and there were the rec people on Palm Boulevard at seven in the morning putting the stripe down. They need to get credit for that. that uh, unfortunately, it rained that day. So then they had to go back and do it again. But I think it's a fabulous uh, plus for the city. Um, we will not have another meeting until September 6th at 4 p.m. at City Hall. And enjoy the summer. Just a quick question. Um, the minutes indicated there were three council members. You only mentioned two were present. Um, the minutes incorrect? I think the minutes say there were two. No, I, I, I do believe they might be incorrect. Oh, I'm sorry. It does say. I I, I don't remember. <laughs> so it, I'm sure it's correct. Sorry, Ryan. Okay. There was no personnel committee meeting, but we do have a report of yep. sweepstakes winners. We have the uh, safety sweepstakes winners. Their uh, recreation is Ben Hall. Police is Melissa Dawson. Public Works is Bernard, I think it's Gordine. And uh, mm -hmm. the fire department is Trent Bazell. Okay. And our next meeting is going to be July the uh, 12th at 545. Okay, Real Property Committee, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Real Property met on June 2nd, 830 AM. Uh, all members of the committee were present. Um, as far as uh, old business beach restoration, there was a little activity on that, so it's still moving along. And um, uh, on dredging, uh, Jack Walker from GL Engineering uh, was to discuss that the Army Corps of Engineers is asking us to do in-kind um, projects as far as uh, for permission to use the disposal basin. And um, we're, we've gone back and forth. And uh, Linda, have we been able to make any progress with that? Uh, we're still talking to them, and uh, we. Uh, made a request for a copy of any permits that are out there um, that might relate to valid pumps. Great. Thank you, Linda. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, Linda suggested a uh, <coughs> escrow account set up to help expedite the process, and um, so you know, hopefully we're going to be able to get that moving forward. Um, also, there's a uh, project as far as um, for a term that's come up is City Council Walk, a way to recognize former elected officials, and uh, Douglas Carr from the Building Department is uh, managing that and moving across with as far as coming up with some ideas as far as that, I believe, at the end of 14th. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, also a discussion on um, 1301, also known as the old Building Department building, and uh, moving along a... Um, Motion was made by Councilman Stone that we demolish the building, and uh, that was passed unanimously. Uh, the next meeting is set up for July 7th at 8.30 a.m. here at City Hall. Okay. Questions for Mr. Mr. Chairman? Is the, uh, is the restaurant now current on its rent? Um, 
I have not asked that question in the last month. I can't answer that. I would have to check as of today. I think it was. Um, it was at the time we met. Right. Yes. Right. Whether something's happened the last two right. weeks, I, I, I can't speak of. Yeah. Hmm. It just seemed that had come up in a number of previous reports. Right. You know, that's, that, yes. that was correct. Mm -hmm. May I, Mr. Bay? Please. Um, as far as that motion, we really need to move that c to City Council mm -hmm. as far as demolition of uh, the old building department known as 1301 Palm Boulevard. So you're making a motion to that effect? Making a motion for that to uh, for that to be moved forward. Okay. And second? Second. Awesome. Okay. Motion and second. Uh, this is, of course, the building we're all familiar with, uh, some of us more than others, because after it's been emptied, uh, we did take a tour of the building with you know, open eyes as far as what condition the building is in and what is potentially behind the walls, in the walls, and overhead. Um, and the potential for leasing it, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the general, well, unanimous consent of the Real Property Committee was it, it wasn't leasable at a, at a rate that would be worth it for the city to maintain it. You've seen it in the minutes. Uh, it's in a difficult condition, um, and, and that's just it. So, the intent would be to tear it down and, if nothing else, create parking over there to uh, alleviate the congestion over here. Three or four times a, a month now, when we have court and, and other times. So, any other comments on 1301? Just as, as the minutes state, the, the original intent when we first started talking about renovating City Hall was to demolish that building and, and, uh, and provide the additional parking and, and we thought perhaps we could rent it out but it sounds like this is this is going to be the final solution. Okay. <laughs> Any other comments? Then heard all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? What we might do in the demolition process, if any citizens out there are really fond of that building, we may save some bricks or something. Or they can build a fire pit or do whatever else they want with the bricks. So, I mean, yeah, people are fonder of strange things. So, or maybe we sell the bricks. I don't know. It is the old city hall. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it was the original city hall. It was uh, his roots mm -hmm. longer than this building. Okay, uh, reports of standing committees. You have combinations tax. Uh, Board of Zoning Appeals and Planning. Any questions, comments, concerns? Um, you will note in the accommodation staff special meeting that was held on June 15th, after much discussion, they chose not to approve uh, a budget which would include the parking road uh, costs and, and this budget activity that they have. Um, Reading the minutes, etc. My guess is a lot of that was because of lack of information and because it was sprung up at the last minute. Frankly, uh, they didn't have a chance to study it. But so be it. Um, moving to bills already in your possession, you have second reading of Ordinance 2011-5, an ordinance to raise the revenue and adopt the budget, City of Island Palms, for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2011, and ending June 30th, 2012. I have a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move that we approve the, uh, the budget or second reading of Ordinance 2011-5, an ordinance to raise revenue and adopt a budget for the City of Isle Palm, South Carolina, for fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2011 and ending June 30th, 2012. Second. Motion I'm and sure second. He wanted to include waiving the reading. And waiving the reading. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> pages of the budget. All right, any discussion? Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to say I... Uh, Based on the, on the public hearing uh, that we had earlier this evening for this, I'm a little bit dismayed for an activity that, that's been going on that everybody was talking about uh, the parking issue whenever uh, City Council has been open about their, their call to the Planning Commission to, to study this and work on it and the, uh, the number of joint meetings that we've had up to this point that were also all public as well as a, a public hearing where we did have a significant number of people uh, present. Um, I would just hope that our residents take the time to c continue to follow what we're doing and stay close and let us know uh, what they want. Uh, this is, I think, kind of the, uh, the last minute kind of drill. But I also would like to sp specifically thank uh, Guy Taylor for coming and giving us the history <laughs> 
And I do agree uh, with him that we do need to be concerned about uh, how those spots may be used at night. And I, I think that that's something that can be right. managed without too much trouble. I also um, would like to thank Dr. Kerrig because I think that before we go any further with this parking plan, I mean, we've only put this money in the budget to use so that we can move forward as the plan dictates so we won't be locked into a, a year without any funds to do anything. It uh, does not mean that we actually have to spend the, the funds. Right. So I really hope that we do have a, a, a comprehensive plan in place before we move forward with uh, the, the spending of the funds. Okay, motion, sir. Well, just I concur with Brian. I think having a whole plan, we're obviously not going to implement it in one year, maybe not two or three years. But having the plan for the citizens to understand the whole plan is crucial. Okay. I'd, I would just like to comment uh, that I think um, our city administrator, Linda, and uh, her team have done a phenomenal job putting this, working hard, uh, really have gone back and looked at every single number. And uh, this is the fourth year in a row we have not raised taxes, and it's something that's noteworthy. And uh, congratulations to... Uh, all the department heads for their hard work and uh, <coughs> getting some great results for the city and the taxpayers. Okay. Here we go. Sandy. Um, I'm going to vote in favor of this, this budget. I am extremely concerned um, at multiple levels. One is the, the fiscal responsibility um, that, that uh, we all share as a council to our citizens. I think that we're, we're um, I'm not going to say lying to ourselves, but we're borrowing money from our reserves to float this budget through. This is not uh, a budget that's going through on, um, on pure income. It is draining reserves. And even more so with the placeholder for the parking. This is a very expensive endeavor, and there is no return on that, that investment. Um, if we continue on with the parking. Um, I understand it as a placeholder. I am most anxious uh, to hear more citizen input and have a public hearing and have notification specifically of the Ocean Boulevard. <coughs> Ultimately, uh, is it 16 residents? There, there are eight parking nodes there. Ultimately, will be dealt with in, in this phase. It's going to directly impact those side-by-side -side residents on Ocean Boulevard, not, and we haven't heard of, from a single one of those at this point in time. Um, residents, second homeowners, whatever they may be. And I think it's important that we take that into consideration. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank okay. you. Very good. All in favor? Motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Ryan's no. Okay. <coughs> Second reading, Ordinance 2011-07, Ordinance Amending Title V, Planning and Development, Chapter 4, Zoning, Article 2, District Regulations, Article 7, signs uh, the City of Alabama's Code Ordinances to delete all references to MF Multifamily Residential District. I'll make that as a motion. In <coughs> wave reading. In wave reading. Second. <laughs> Second. All right. No discussion on this one. All in favor, please say aye. 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 <coughs> motion carries. Turn the page. First reading. Um, this is first reading by title only, 2011-08, uh, an ordinance amending title 8 for motor vehicles, traffic chapter 4, traffic regulations, city of Isle of Palms ordinances to provide exceptions for designated public parking and beach accesses. The, it's a companion ordinance uh, to 2011-09, an ordinance amending title 5, planning development zoning. Uh, general provision section 5415 beach regulation city of Isle of Palms code of ordinance to provide for designated public parking and beach accesses. I'll make a motion to approve first reading by title only in both ordinances. So moved. Second. Motion and seconded a couple of times. <laughs> uh, as we've said, this is just the start. This opens it up. This gives us something to focus on. Uh, we, as, as we would expect, we'll have a general uh, public hearing on this matter, which obviously is the entire parking <coughs> issue dealing with the 10th through Breach Inlet. Uh, we'll schedule that in the next uh, next round, maybe next month. If we 
have a quorum of folks, uh, et cetera. Um, and then after the public hearing and, and getting that input, we move to uh, either change our uh, our direction or uh, or subsequently move to second reading of, of the ordinances uh, or additional ordinances if we have to make such changes. So that would be the plan as uh, as I see it. Uh, maybe before the end of July, we'll have have a public hearing. Uh, maybe it, or maybe we could do it just before council meeting. Uh, we want to take that much time. Uh, everybody's in agreement. So I'll, I'll, I'll make that statement now. Is July council meeting uh, appropriate for the public hearing on this matter? Is everybody going to be around? I'd like to make sure everybody's. Okay. Uh, what, um, Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'm just kind of thinking that we might have a large turnout for okay for that. Uh, um, that's you just saying. just my feeling that for perhaps a, a separate public hearing. <coughs> separate hearing. That's what I was going to say too. Thank you. All right, we'll look for a date that uh, could uh, could accommodate that uh, given the schedule. Uh, if none found, we'll just uh, bite the bullet and do it at the Friday the council meeting. We will allow adequate time so there's no so maybe start at six. Yeah, start <laughs> yeah. start earlier. So. Uh, all right, we have a motion on the table and a second. All in favor of 2011-8 and 9, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. A no. Okay, moving on. Uh, we've already done Gatsby 54. So uh, the only other piece of miscellaneous business, and I'm glad Linda has her calendar up, and I'm going to ask the Real Property Committee members to uh, look at their calendar. Um, I am now on the board of the Association of South Carolina Mayors. This is a new organization under the Municipal Association. It's a, a gathering of mayors uh, <coughs> throughout the state. Uh, notables that you might know other than myself, of course. Uh, Joe Riley is going to represent Charleston. Uh, it's going to be Doug Eccles from Rock Hill will be vice chair in the President of the association was Jeffrey Graham, gentleman from Camden, if you know where Camden is. Uh, there are eight or nine of us here. Uh, but they've called the first meeting for July 7th, which is when we have our real property committee meeting. I can either try and get all these guys to change the date or we can change the date of the real property committee <laughs> meeting. Well, or we did have first dibs. You did have <laughs> first dibs. <laughs> I, I can, I'll do the eighth. But, Friday the 8th, more same concerned. time. Um, same time, same station. Uh, yeah. 8.30, Friday the 8th. Okay. Okay. So yeah. your calendars will change that Marie just handed out to me. <laughs> Move real property to Friday the 8th at 8.30. Well, thank you for being accommodating. So, with that said, uh, the only purpose of this mayor's organization, by the way, is just to <coughs> have a mayor's voice, a collective mayor's voice. They think the mayors will speak louder than just a collection of uh, elected officers. So it's basically a lobbying <laughs> arm, uh, uh, you know, to get a greater voice within the halls of uh, the state capitol. But you know, I'm not sure they listen to. But anyhow, I won't go into that. <laughs> anyhow, I'll see what it turns out to be. So, any other matters to be brought before council? Not heard. Motion to adjourn. So moved. moved. Second. Seconded. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Right. As everybody runs out the door. <laughs>